in the backdrop, Stephen Curry threw four games, most threes that has, that has ever been made by an NBA player through the first four games of a season. You think about the averages. You think about what he's doing from an efficiency standpoint. And leading his team in year 16. It's, all right? it's incredible. And still playing at a high level. What year is it? 16. Okay, just, just real quick here. Joe Montana played 13 years for the Niners. And one of them didn't even suit up, not once. Do you know how many years Jerry Rice played with the 49ers? I would guess and say 13 or 14. 16 years. 16 years? Wow, was it 16? I know. 85, yeah, 85. Barry Bonds, how many How many years with the Giants? Signed in 93, retired in 07, mm -hmm. 14, 15 years. 15 years. I mean, right now, you're looking at Steph is right there with all of those guys. Right now, we're in the middle right. of it. And it made, it made me start thinking about this, like, we know Joe, what Joe did, what Jerry's done, what Barry Bonds has accomplished. Like, those things are forever cemented. No mm -hmm. one is knocking them out. This is with all respect. Like, when we're comparing the greats to the greats, we are respecting them at the yeah. highest. What did it take for Brady, for us to say while Brady was playing, what was the moment for the majority of people to finally tap out and say, all right, he's better than Joe? Probably was a Seahawks game for a lot of people. You think it was a Seahawks? For I was a lot saying, of people, because I hear from you and I... I I quit you because you were you're a fan. Yes, you. you I, I hated up, him. You know, I hated, hated Brady. I, I see. I always had a thing where patch a pass and I actually liked Brady. I was actually depressed when they lost to the New York Giants and didn't go undefeated. I didn't want I, him. I, 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 I was. I was like, I, he's everything I want in a quarterback. He reminded me so much of Joe Montana that. I was like, I want this guy to go 19 and 0. I love Randy Moss. Yeah. I love Wes Walker. I was Walker. rooting against you know, him. I, I didn't I, want him to get four. I wanted you to say, I wanted you to say out to get that ring. I wanted Rodney Harrison to get that ring. But to me, the seminal moment for me, for me, I don't know about others. When he was facing the Seahawks, I hated the Seahawks so much. I was rooting for them, and that 13 point comeback where he threw for like 200 yeah. yards in the fourth quarter—that was the moment for me. But I think, I think the majority of people, at minimum, was that at maximum 28-3. Yeah. That yeah. fifth championship. Yeah. For me, for me, it was obviously the three and four years. And then seeing them evolve because yeah. at first he was a quote unquote game manager, which I hate. Yeah. But it was the Patriots were led by defense. hundred percent. But people forget that Carolina Panthers game. He was really, really good. Really good. Throwing dimes all over the place. And so to see Brady evolve into a guy who, hey, I can throw the ball around a yard exactly. like Peyton Manning. I can throw the ball around uh throw the ball around like uh Drew Brees. His game evolved over time. Yes. Same thing with Stephen Curry. He's not just a three-point shooter. Oh, look at the way he finishes at well, the rim. I mean, seriously, the way he finishes at the rim, moving off the ball, playing on the ball, screening, he became a better defender. Now, I'm not saying he's a lockdown defender, but damn, he knows how to defend, knows how to move his feet, right? So his game has evolved absolutely. over time, and he's aging like fine wine. He's aging like a Tom Brady, like a LeBron James, so... I mean, to, to your point, though, the Seahawks game, I think for a lot of people, yes, that's what flipped it. And I think, like, so I'm just talking about in real time where we see the passing of right. the torch. But even Brady, real quick, yeah, had controversy. No, he had Spygate. He had deflate gate. He had multiple things. One was the coach and and was that he had his own he had his own stuff. Plus B, like let's let's call it what it is. A lot of people dismiss the first couple of championships, at least early on. Now there's no question, right? right. I think a lot of people dismiss Steph's champion. Not the first one, but Well, no, the first one they do. You, you know think? why? Because of the Kyrie and Kyrie and Kevin oh, Love. God. They do. Yeah. That Kyrie sucks. and Kevin Love. Well, I, I'm just looking at it and I go, all right, now Jerry Rice, in real time. Most people had no problem saying in 1994 when he passed Steve Largent, yeah, he's better than Steve Largent. Right. And then he went on to have another 10 years right. of excellence. Same way with Ricky Henderson, like Lou Brock. We all respect Lou Brock. Right. When Ricky Henderson broke Lou Brock's record yeah. at like 31 years old, everyone was like, yeah, yeah, that's the greatest base dealer of all time. Right. Like, it was not a doubt. We all know in the middle of his career, he's the greatest shooter of all time, right? right. Very, like Steph Curry is. Right. But why are we afraid to take it the next step further and say, he combines, Steph does combine Barry and Jerry's statistical excellence individually right. with the winning and the right. team leadership that Joe Montana had. Why are we afraid to say he's the best? Not he's the most beloved. We know he's the most beloved. He's the best. Right now, we're watching the best. Yeah. Why are we afraid to do it? I don't think, are we afraid to do it? I feel like some are people we? are afraid to do it. Because they think Why it's a that? knock on Joe, even though we're not knocking Joe. No, it's it just shows, it shows... It shows that Steph is that great. That's what I'm saying. That he's catapulted, catapulted above Joe ghosts. Montana. 
I mean, he's right there on the Mount Rushmore. Let's go to Joe in, the, in San Francisco. Joe, what's happening, man? Uh, chime in on a conversation, man, about Stephen Curry. What's up, Joe? Good morning. Good morning, guys from Alamo Square here in the Western Edition. Love it. Um, nice. Film is what we call it, Joe. What's that? I said we call it film all, but I like the Western Edition. You could go ahead with that one. There, there you go. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a wonderful part of wonderful part of town. Nice. I love the area. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, I'm a 55 year old guy, so I've seen all these guys come and go, and it has to be Steph. The, the, the really? reason uh, Joe oh, it has to be clearly because Joe's post career with the Niners has been problematic. Um, Barry. He was on going to be a Hall of Famer no matter what, and then he did what he did, and he was kind of a difficult guy to be with. Agreed. With Jerry, Jerry also played with the Raiders. And let's not forget that the importance of right. the Oakland East Side uh, for the Bay Area. That's a good yeah. call. But, and, and he absolutely dominated all statistics. Steph represents the entire Bay Area, mm-hmm. clearly because of the Warriors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's dominated. And he's been with only one team and will be with one team. He is the Mount Rushmore of Mount Rushmore in the Bay Area. And there's no competition for that because there's extra factors. You, you're so I'm right about that. That's a great you. call, Joe, and great call. And, I, and I'm thinking about the Raiders. I'm thinking who could represent the Raiders in the way that Steph Curry did. Now, Tim Brown was a great Raider for a long, long time. Long time. time. We're kind of quiet. He did, you know, we didn't have a team quiet. around him for so but long. They were in L.A., they yeah, came to Oakland, yeah. they weren't good, and they yeah. were finally good, and then it kind of felt like Jerry Rice maybe stole some of his headlines. Yeah. It if felt like Rich Kanda repre- stole some of those headlines. If you're going to find a representative for the Raiders, unfortunately, similar to like the Willie Mays and Wilt Chamberlain and Rick Barry conversation, you're going to have to go back into the 70s. Well, you gotta go, 50 years ago. Well, you got to go Gene Upshaw. you got to yeah. go Howard Shell. Hell, you may even go to the owner in Al Davis. You know? you know, he didn't even play. But do those names resonate? Like, Spadoni's our Raider yeah. fan here on this show. I, do those names truly connect to you? Well, the thing with the Raiders is, and Al always, you know, he he prided himself on this. He took a lot of outcasts and castoffs from other places and right. brought them into the Raiders, gotcha. and then they were a Raider, right? right? You think of uh, Lyle Alzado, amongst yeah. others. Like, Howie Jim Long, Plunkett. Howie Long, yeah, Jim Plunkett. Howie Long was uh, a Raider's entire career, but no right. one looks at Howie Long. It's like, oh, that guy represents the Raiders. Very good, Hall of Fame right. player. But he's just very quiet. Yeah. He's very, he didn't LA have that guy. Raider. Yes, yeah, he didn't have LA, that Raider yeah. image, right? right. Um, so you think of C- I think of, I think of Ken Stabler. Honestly, Kenny Stabler. Stabler. he was a he was a badass. Okay. Always came from behind. A renegade, renegade, yeah, if you will. I but, agree he, with that. but he played at the Oilers at the end of his career. Yeah. He wasn't a career Raider. I, I would C- say Wood. Al Davis. Yeah. Is the, that's what me, I said. Al Davis. Yeah, is the is the seminal, which and is kind of crazy. But he didn't play. He, but he was a coach, he play. And, an owner, a and, GM, Madden and, as well. And, I go John and, Madden. Madden. Yeah, good call. And Madden retired in what 78, 79? Again, a long time ago, forty something years ago. Right. And Al Davis. His last 10, 15 years were not very good no. as an owner. There's no. a lot of bust. Now, Charles Woodson, the first stint with Charles Woodson as a Raider was underwhelming. Sure, they went to a Super Bowl, lost to Tampa Bay. His best play was the tuck rule, and it got called back. Right, got called God. back. But then think about when he left. God. He needed that change of scenery yeah. because he wasn't taking things seriously. Was he DPOI in Green Bay? He was in God. Green Bay. God, that that be- first stint with the Raiders was underwhelming. He was a great, great player alongside Eric Allen, but it was underwhelming because of some of the habits off the field. Some of the things off the field that was happening with Charles Woodson, it was best for him to leave the Bay Area. Well, and I don't think he was relished here in the Bay Area until he came back with the yes. Raiders as an OG vet yeah, and finished I his career and played well. So I, I don't know if anybody out there with the Raiders really resonates with the Bay Area right now. A current Raider? I just don't, I, I don't know. Derek Carr? No. no. Well, the other part of this, the Joe Montana factor is the Niners stunk in the 70s. Stunk. And there was a lot of turmoil going on in the city. And so Joe represented the rise of the Niners, the rise mm-hmm. of the city. And, and the Niners did as well. Barry Bonds, same thing. Like when I think of Giants baseball, I think of Barry signing with the Giants, right. re- making them relevant, the stadium being built, and the team going from a, a has been to ushering them into the financial wealth that they are currently. Right. Not that he's the reason they won championships, but he's a big part of their evolution. Yeah. When I look at Steph Curry, think about what he championships, relevance. We were the most decrepit franchise in sports, and then a new stadium, the house that Steph built, even yeah. though Joe obviously financed it and got right. it all done. And stuff. But like, those are the metaphors I think of with Steph Curry. Um, 888-957-9570. Really fun conversation for a Friday. We do have shameless shout-outs today. We're going to move shameless shout-outs to 845, not 745, 845, uh, because we have no the show. We're going to qualify somebody for knockout, uh, the first ever 95-70 game knockout tournament. 
888-957-9570. Have we underrated Steph Curry's greatness? Have we underrated Steph Curry's greatness? Because it feels like we have. We've taken it for granted. Like, we've gotten bored with LeBron James' triple doubles. We've gotten bored with his stats that he's been doing it for over 20 years. So true. As much as I can't stand LeBron now, the dude's a great player. And he's still dropping 30 in the year 20. I mean, it's really impressive. But have we underrated Steph Curry's greatness? 888-957-9570. Good morning.